if you're a kid that grew up in the 80s like me, you know, all you ever wanted to do was to, well, emulate your, your action heroes who always ended up driving some sort of armored car, like Rambo, Norris, Schwarzenegger, you know, like, come with me if you want to live, you got to get into the helicopter. And <laughs> they always somehow ended up in some sort of tank, which is a vehicle which I know we all would never have thought of ever owning, let alone just drive. Well, that is until now. Meet the GWM Tank 300, and yes, it looks like something we've seen before. Okay, let's get the big thing out of the way. Yes, it does look like a Jeep or maybe even a G-Wagon to a point, but what's wrong with drawing inspiration from something that works, right? I mean, in this look, it definitely does work. The design is quite refreshing because a lot of its rivals nowadays have well, more curves in the front of mountain pass. And this looks like it's meant to go off-road. And that's what it's meant to be, an actual off-roader. That looks good. It has a ground clearance of 224 millimeters, which is good to do some serious off-roading, but it's gonna be tough for short and round folk like me to actually get in. It's just over 4.7 meters long, 1.9 meters high and wide. So it's not a small vehicle at all. And it could definitely, well, just from its looks, looks like it can go off-roading. The Tank 300 makes use of two engine options, both making use of a four-cylinder, two-liter turbo petrol engine. And it features a hybrid setup as well. Now, the standard configuration produces 162 kilowatts and 380 newton meters, and can send all the power to all four of its wheels by an eight-speed ZF auto box. Then, there's this HEV model, which produces a whopping 255 kilowatts and 648 newton meters of torque, and it uses a nine-speed hydraulic auto box and an electric motor and a battery setup as well. Now, besides the engine choices, you can choose between three different models, starting with the Super Luxury at 726,000 Rand, the Ultra Luxury at 776,000 Rand, and this, the HEV Super Luxury at 852,000 Rand. All of them, as mentioned, have selective four-wheel drive modes, which includes two and four high, four low, and then the Ultra Luxury version gets front and rear diff locks meaning that it should be able to do some very, very impressive stuff off-road. Now, the interior of the Tank 300 is worthy of that luxury name it uses because it looks and it feels a lot more lani than what you would expect from an off-roader at this price. Yes, there are some styling cues from a certain German brand. <laughs> it does work, right? What I do like though is the, the quilted leather trim that you kind of find on both the seats and on the inlays on the doors. It's, it's very comfortable to the touch and it looks very good. Talking about the seats, it's very, very comfortable, especially with me while hurting my back after falling out of a boot of another car for another review, but that's another story. Now in the super luxury version, which is this car, you get six way adjustments on the driver's seat, but you get eight way in the ultra luxury and you get Nappa leather trim. But this synthetic leather that we find here is actually quite posh to the touch as well. There's both reach and rake on the steering wheel and loads of buttons as well. And then there's this short dash, which makes for a great view out the front, even with this big, massive bonnet here in the front. Talking about good views, it's this 12.3 inch infotainment and driver display. It's two separate screens, but the way it's designed, it looks like it's one large screen. Now the infotainment UI that is on here kind of looks similar to what you find from Jaguar Land Rover, which is a really good thing because the menus and shortcuts, it's very clear. There's no buttons, but it's got a whole bunch of shortcuts on the side here. When you, depending on your seat position, it is a bit of a stretch, but you get used to it. 
it's got wireless charging as well as wired charging with usb ports and you get wireless apple carplay it's android auto sadly though the only thing that i don't like is that right on the side here is where you find the buttons for the volume controls so for a passenger to reach it they need to reach all across right here behind the steering wheel there are buttons though for aircon controls and it's driving modes and the weirdest gear knob that you'd ever could find but it does work really well and like most cars it's electronically controlled so you have to kind of get used to it at first there's two cup holders here in the center armrest which is hidden but sadly i couldn't fit two large cups next to each other but the rest of the space in the center console thingy is quite generous i can't fault the cabin at all it is functional but a bit busy as you can see especially with all the grab handles and stuff all over the place and the metallic trim and and all that but it's not distracting the only issue that i do have though is the driver display it's 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 good it does show you everything but why can't we just have traditional dials i mean it shows a whole bunch of info including the other cars on the road which i really do not need to see in a driver display because there's this big thing called the windscreen and if i look at it i can see the cars so I, yeah just give me traditional tiles that would work what is really good though is it's 360 degree camera setup it gives you clear views when parking when stopping at an intersection and even when going off-roading with modes showing you where you can place your wheels it shows you a 3d view a through view an upside down view it shows you all the views making things just really cool when you're driving or parking what i really do like though is that it gives you a distance calculator like in centimeters uh, that is brilliant it's geeky but it's brilliant in the rear it's very comfortable in the back here especially with this whole boxy shape that you kind of get it gives you enough headroom and leg room and all of that with decent enough space for everybody between us look you can sit three people in here but as always i would always recommend two people to sit in a back seat there are cup holders in the center armrest there's two usb ports air convents and grab handles everywhere why because you're going to need it because it's really high to get in here there's um, iso fix and tethering points for two car seats so overall it's quite a decent setup in here for i think for for, for most families maybe even a little more Oh, and it gives you 400 liters of space in the back. The swivel door is quite a large thing, but it is quite easy to open. And it also has the ability to be locked in place. So, well, it doesn't move, which helps, especially when you are loading things in here, especially when you're at an incline. Then there's also this flat surface for you to be able to load things straight in here oh and it also has a 12 volt and a 220 volt power socket in here meaning that you'd be able to plug in things like a portable fridge now there's no underfloor storage as with most other cars because that's where you find the hev's battery but also included in the back here is a fire extinguisher a medical kit as well as this jack for changing its tires now the rear seat you can fold down in a 60 40 split which then gives you 1635 liters of space now i know compared to its rivals that's not much but if you are going to be loading a lot more things in here you can definitely add a trailer because it has a brake towing capacity rated at 2,500 kilograms. Getting behind the wheel of the Tank 300 HEV is, well, quite a bit of a weird experience because you see the engine setup that we have with this performance figures of 255 kilowatts and 648 newton meters of torque makes you think that you're going to get like jump out of your seat kind of performance, right? But in actual fact, it doesn't because in its, in its dri normal driving mode, it kind of feels a little bit, you know, sluggish at times. Um, and you literally have to put your foot flat to kind of get a response out of it. Uh, but, 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 I gotta say, if you do put it in its sports mode, then this car becomes alive and then you kind of like get shocked because you're in a huge, large, boxy shaped SUV and it just takes off like this and that is insane. But even with that though, 
it, it, it's still unfortunately the negative side that it gets is that well, GWM claims 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers. I've not seen anything shy of 10.5. And I drive all test cars like, well, it's my own because, well, fuel is expensive, people. And I think the problem is because this car is always in all wheel drive mode, but when it does switch over to its EV mode, it switches to rear wheel drive, which also happens if you put it in eco mode. So it should come down a bit, but I haven't really experienced that. But it is quite fun when driving in EV mode, especially when you're driving around your neighborhoods and your parking lots and, you know, see people's faces when they see this huge thing come past them and, you know, it's silent. <laughs> I love that. Safety is another highlight of the GWM Tag 300 HEV. It comes with a full suite of advanced driver assistance systems, including adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and autonomous emergency braking. It's equipped with six airbags, stability control, and a strong frame design to handle South Africa's diverse driving conditions. Now, I have to confess, I have not taken this car off-road at all because, well, I'm not really going to go off-road. But so a lot of my colleagues that have taken this car off-roading has all come back and said, well, it does it really, really well. And it's very, very capable. And that it would even put a lot of, well, other well-known off-roaders to shame. The Tank 300 has two innovative features, Crawl Control, which is an off-road cruise control that keeps you at a steady pace while you focus on navigating tricky terrains, and Tank Turn, which locks the inside rear wheel when rounding a bend to shortening its turning circle by a noticeable amount. The only thing that they all claim, and I also think it might be, could be definitely be right, is that it, it's, it's got standard on-road tires and that might let it down a bit. And I think if you are going to be doing a lot of off-roading, then maybe upgrading those tires should be a good idea. But, you know, sadly, most of us don't ever go do that. I mean, I've literally just drove it on some gravel roads and sandy roads and, and it's handled it really, really well out there. And to be honest, I think that's probably where this car is mostly going to be used. Because most people who buy this car and other off-roading SUVs, don't really take it off-roading. We go to the occasional wine farm, we go to the occasional picnic spot or camping spot where there's some gravel, right? And that's really where we use it. And mostly, what do we find people using these cars for? Well, climbing high pavements. And that's not a problem with this car at all. So, if that is what you are gonna be kind of using it for, in those cases, which is like me and most everybody well then this car is perfect but it does it does give you that confidence that if you do decide to go off-road or go bunda bashing someday for whatever reason that guaranteed this car is going to be delivering 100 percent without any issues and that's very good very good actually Overall, I like what GWM has done with the Tank 300. They claim to provide a more than an off-road experience in a car that, well, can handle tough conditions while still giving you that luxury feel at a very competitive price point. Now, all the Tank 300 models come standard with a seven year, 200,000 kilometer warranty, as well as giving you access to seven years unlimited roadside assistance. You also get a five year, 75,000 kilometer service plan. Now, this HEV version here gets a further eight years, 150,000 kilometer battery warranty. And I think that's more than enough peace of mind when it comes to this car. Now, the big question is obviously, should you get one? And I think, why not? I think you should. Well, that is if you can get over the high, you know, fuel claims, because I think it's a fresh take on a segment which many of us have been excluded from because of its pricing for so long. And, and I really do hope that right now, a lot of other manufacturers with this car being here, now maybe rethink their offerings on vehicles in this car's category.
Thanks for watching this edition of Tyrone Paulson Drives. Leave a like, a comment, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Catch you on the next one.